Monday afternoon and Monday evening you'll be on your own for dinner. And then Tuesday morning, those of you who are going to United Streetcar, uh, our buses leave at 8.50, we'll have two of them. The buses after the United Streetcar tour at Oregon Ironworks uh, will take the group first to Gateway Station. People who want to go to the airport can bring their luggage, put it under the bus, and get down to Gateway where they can get the mass airport line. We'll get to that lane. Then the buses will go to Union Station. The same thing is true for those people. If they're catching a train on Tuesday at Union Station, they can bring their luggage, put it on the buses. And then lastly, the buses will return to this hotel. And all that should be over between 12 and 1 o'clock, 12 noon and 1 o'clock on Tuesday. So, does anybody have any questions? When you said 8.30, there's a group of people in the hotel. We're going to leave 8.25 to 8.30 for... Um, we'll have I'm, I'm going to give you the call. I'll be leading that group, but then Sid will take over later. Okay. Okay, anyway, I hope that the housekeeping is okay. I hope everybody will find their way and uh, this will work out. We've had a lot of good luck here in Portland. We've had some wonderful experiences. We had a great tour of the West system on Friday. Saturday we went out to uh, Brooks, Oregon. Had a terrific time at the museum there and on the Mountain Railway. Today everybody seems to be very happy about riding the uh, Omaco vintage car. So, so far so good. I hope everything will work out on tomorrow on Monday. But I do want to recognize a few people that had a lot to do with our success uh, today. Before we get on to some reports from our officers and our, finally our speaker. Um, two people who are active rail fans uh, in the Oregon Electric Railway Historical Society. Uh, Mark Cavanaugh, who gave our performance on Friday night.
It would then make the association go and keep it in operation. And we, I'd like to uh, recognize them. Among them is our director, John Pappas. Bob Newhauser is our third vice president and the third president. And Ray Berger is our second vice president. And he spent a lot of his retirement time at the office raising money for us through sales of publications and maps. And he prepares all of that that you usually get uh, with uh, some of the mailings. In addition, there's Gibby Matina, our office manager. And he's our data file. He keeps the association membership all together, gets everything going so we know who's paid up, who can get his magazine, and so on. Jim has a lot of the workload at headquarters, as Ray does. In addition, from the uh, New York group, I want to uh, recognize Sid Keels. <laughs> Sid organizes all the fan trips for the New York division, is always there at the meetings, and does a hell of a job. And uh, last but not least, and certainly not least, in fact most, is the president of our organization. And I'd like him to come up to the podium and say a few remarks. Frank Miklos. I think it was 1962 that I joined the ERA. One of the very first uh, people that I met while I was there was a gentleman by the name of Jack May. And at that time, he was the editor of Headlights to help justify by hand the typing for the individual uh, issues and set up some of the headlines and stuff like that. And uh, it was largely through Jack that uh, I started a career in transportation because he uh, recommended me for a job at the transportation agency. Uh, <coughs> a few years ago, uh, I think it was two years ago, Jack ran the Philadelphia Convention and he's been doing conventions for probably 30 years or more. And a lot of time and effort goes into it, as you can probably see by how this one came together. And two years ago, he said he would like to retire from the position as chairman of the convention committee. So we had a group from New York put the Los Angeles convention together last year. So Jack got a bit of a break. And uh, the same group got together to put the uh, trip to Europe uh, for earlier this year, and they said there's a lot of work involved in putting a European trip together. And they asked if I could prevail upon Jack to come out of retirement to set up this year's convention. So with hesitation, because I know how much of an effort it is for Jack, and how hard he worked on it, and how anxious he was to rid himself of that obligation, I prevailed upon him to uh, set up this year's convention. And I think he did his usual outstanding job. I was wondering if you would have a chance to sit down and do it with everybody else because he was making sure everything was going so smoothly here. So I would like to, as I say, uh, we got the round of applause that he deserved. And I would like to thank everybody who came. Uh, it's something I look forward to every year because I get to know a lot of people. And, made friends within this organization, and uh, I'm happy to have been a part of this for so many years. And I want to thank in particular the board members who Jack introduced. It's been a wonderful group to work with over the last few years. They, they do a lot of things uh, for the organization, put in time, a lot of time and effort in. And I would also like to uh, pay tribute to a couple of board members who are not here tonight. Uh, Bill Gill is our uh, first vice president and the other one who's missing is Sandy Campbell, uh, who is our membership secretary, and he's also the editor of Headlights, so he's the one who helps to, to get that publication out every month. And there are two people here who work very hard to contribute to Headlights. One is John Pappas, who was introduced earlier, 
and the others may burger. Like us. 